This is the 2019 Polaris Razor RS1. This model was introduced only about a year ago and was designed by Polaris to go after the hardcore off-roader, looking for high performance, high speed off-road capability and a single seat configuration. Today we're going to take a look at some of its unique features. The engine on the RS1 is a direct pull from the Razor XP1000, but because of the unique tighter packaging you have here with this smaller chassis, Polaris had to make some design updates and changes to help fit this in here and make sure everything worked properly. First thing we'll look at is the dipstick location. It's normally where you would find it, over here on the right hand side, but the dipstick tube also acts as your oil fill. Because it's hard to access there, every RS1 comes with its own unique oil fill funnel. This allows you to get in there, fill it up with little to no spillage. Another change is to the heat shielding. Players developed a newer heat shield for the exhaust and around the engine compartment, made out of a newer high performance material to help keep engine temperatures low and towards the back of the vehicle. Also for cooling, Polaris had to develop a brand new system for this that features a rear mounted, high mounted radiator. This new radiator does feature dual fans and something that's unique and a lot of people don't realize on the RS1 is these fans don't work in tandem all the time. Your right fan is your primary fan, so you'll see it on most of the time once temperatures reach your low 190s. The left fan will only turn on when temperatures exceed about 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll turn back off and allow the right fan to continue doing normal cooling duty. So the engine on the RS1 is pulled from the Razor XP1000, whereas the rest of the driveline is donated from the Razor XP Turbo, starting with the PVT housing here. This is pulled from the Razor XP Turbo, and features the same high flow intake and exhaust, as well as the same cast aluminum backing plate instead of composite. Inside, you have turbo spec clutches that have a unique calibration for the RS1 due to its different size, power, and application. On the inside, you do have a full gear driven transmission, so gone is the reverse chain that you'd find on the Razor XP1000. Moving up front, you have the new isolated front differential from the Razor XP Turbo S. This new diff does provide a higher impact strength as well as improved cooling and less vibration given through the driveline as well as the rest of the car. Now let's move to the outside of the RS1 and take a look at some of the unique features that pertain to the suspension, the chassis, bodywork, and controls. First up front, we do have a unique set of A-arms that are bespoke to the RS1, so they're not found on any other Razor. You also have a high performance steering rack that allows you to go from lock to lock in only one and a half turns. Out back, we have the set of trailing arms and radius rods taken directly from the Razor XP1000. But despite this, the RS1 does have a seven inch shorter wheelbase. So this does provide a more agile handling effect when you're whipping it through the woods or on the track. Up front, once you remove the hood, you do have a storage space under here. And when you remove the storage bin, it gives you access to your fuse block, your battery, and on a side note, see this cutout here? This is actually where a GPS receiver will go. So similar to the Razer XP1000 and Turbo, this model should soon offer the ride command system. The very top here, this top cowling does come off after you remove the two screws, gives you access to the pulse bar. So the RS1 does use the Pulse electrical system borrowed from the Ranger XP1000 and the General 1000. This allows simple plug and play access for electrical accessories. Moving along the right hand side of the car. Underneath this panel here is the location of your ECU. It is different than most razors where they're found behind the seat, but here if you remove the torque screws from the inside, this panel pops off, allows you access to your ECU. The body panels, as we showed earlier for the rear, are able to be removed for access to the engine and for cleaning. This can all be done toll free. You just release these two rubber straps here and in the back, and this quarter turn knob here in the middle, and the body panels will pull free. Lastly, up top, we have new high mounted intakes. So they're gonna give you snorkels similar to the uh, Razor High Lifter Edition. It's gonna give you intake for your PVT and your engine all up high, even above your head.
Finally, we're gonna end on the inside of the RS1, where Polaris has given you a race-inspired interior. Up front, you do have a centrally located digital dash that does give you analog and digital readouts, and the LCD, LCD display is configurable for both brightness, readouts, and even background color. Down on the right-hand side, all of your switches are in one location. So you have your headlight control, all-wheel drive switch, as well as a four-position ignition switch that does allow you to have just accessory on, as well as full vehicle systems on. You also have additional cutouts and blanks for any accessory switches. So as you add stereos, lights, anything like that, you've got space for them. And one of the coolest features on the RS1 is the dual pedal for your brakes. With having dual sided pedal like this, with it being offset, it allows for easier left foot braking. And once it's mastered, left foot braking allows you to have more control of the vehicle, especially when upsetting in corners, actually maintaining control through corners. So that's it. That's the 2019 Polaris Razor RS1. It's been Ernie with Miller's Motorsports. Thank you for watching.